I'm going to show you a very important part of the blood dropping experiments, and that is nothing more than a medicine dropper that has been inserted into a two-hole rubber stopper. You may see that it is slit lengthwise to more easily accommodate the insertion of the medicine dropper into the stopper. Now, there are some strings attached to this because over here on this side we have another hole filled with the plumb line. And the plumb line is simply a long nail that is taped to a fish line that goes down through the second hole. Therefore, when we drop something from the medicine dropper, it's going to be just approximately a quarter of an inch away from the plumb line, and it's very easy to determine which way to go. This is the setup I used in the laboratory to drop blood accurately to a target down below. Again, the rubber stopper with two holes and one medicine dropper and one plumb line are shown clearly in this picture. As we go further down past the camera that was used to record the drop striking and down to the metallic can cover, which is actually the target. Uh, that will be described in more detail shortly, but that shows the overall setup. Going back up once more to the top, it was very easy to control the lateral movement left and right by putting masking tape, which is not in the picture, on the tabletop so I could just move the ring stand an inch or so to the left or to the right as I chose. It worked very well. It's very inexpensive equipment. The bottom of a, or top possibly, of a three pound coffee can a medicine dropper, and a little plumb line. That's about all it takes, but the results are quite spectacular. This experiment is designed to show the wettability of a surface. To the left, which is somewhat clearly shown, in the center is a film of thin grease that has been added to make the tin can non-wetting. On the right side is the clean tin can top by itself. So, if I were to drop a drop of blood at the juncture, which is what my first bombardier act will be, it should allow the blood on the right to expand to a normal diameter, whereas the blood on the left, by cohesive forces, will suddenly be contracted right up to the uh, edge or the line of demarcation of the grease. Let's go a little closer on this before I let the first drop go. Now we'll just see how accurately I have my bomb site. Perfect. Now you notice that it came right to the right side. I'm now going to move my equipment over to the left side where the drop will hit the non-wetting surface and it should contract very quickly. and you can see that it is getting smaller and smaller. Going now to the right side where it should impact and retain the original diameter. I think the point is quite well made and I believe the wettability on the right side is clearly demonstrated. On the left side the blood has coalesced or pulled itself together so the diameter is approximately one half or even less the drop on the right. And then again we have the one in the center which has completely pulled itself off of the non-wetting surface to the wetting surface so it is a thicker stain than the one on the right but not as thick as the one on the left because it has a smaller diameter. So that's sufficient for this particular experiment. I'll zoom back out so you can see the ruler, which is right there.